Star Wars 7x7 episode 2814. Yesterday we were talking about Maul and Kenobi in Star Wars Rebels and how the events of Rebels and Maul and Kenobi getting together in that series reflected in any way on the possibility of Maul showing up in the Kenobi series. Well, we're going to conclude that conversation and we're going to bring the Inquisitorius into it because as it turns out, Maul actually uses an Inquisitorius tactic to make that final meeting happen. Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So before we begin, there's something, it's not quite a Department of Corrections, it's probably more like a Department of Elaborations, <laughs> if you will. So yesterday I talked about how Ahsoka and the Inquisitors were involved in this whole story situation and I don't know if I was entirely clear. So for Twilight of the Apprentice, the Inquisitor relationship there is the fact that there were actually Inquisitors on Malachor. They were hunting for what they termed a shadow, and that shadow was actually Maul in hiding on Malachor. So that's what that was about. And of course, Ahsoka had gone to Malachor with Ezra and Kanan to investigate the whole Sith holocron business, or actually just go to Malachor and find out how they could possibly destroy the Sith, which is what led to them finding Maul and getting the Sith holocron and all that whole fun stuff. All right, so I think that clarifies that point. So the other two episodes of Rebels that we're going to talk about today are Visions and Voices, this is episode 11 from season 3, and Twin Sons, which is episode 20 from season 3. That's the climactic battle situation. So basically what happens in Visions and Voices is we are following up on the events of the Holocrons of Fate. So Maul doesn't know where Kenobi is and only has partial information, thinks that Ezra has the other part of the information, but the holocrons are no longer in his possession and they're damaged anyway. So even if they wanted to use the holocrons to try to do that whole thing that they did in the holocrons of fate, they couldn't do it anyway. Like they just aren't prepped for it. But Part of that whole situation meant that some memories of Ezra's were transferred into Maul, and you would imagine that some of Maul's memories were in Ezra's as well. But basically, one of those memories included finding out the location of Chopper Base. So Maul shows up and says to Ezra, hey, you got to help me get the information I need, and I'll help you get the information you need. And if you don't do this with me, then I'll reveal the location of Chopper Base to the Empire. And so, yes, as usual, there's a discussion between Kane and Ezra and you know everybody else should he shouldn't he blah 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 and ultimately Ezra does and Kanan and Sabine end up following him and trying to make sure that he's going to remain safe because they know Maul is going to double cross him some way somehow and of course that's exactly what happens so they go to Dathomir which is where apparently Maul has been holed up after escaping Malachor and they work an old magic, magic with a K at the end, potion situation that Maul has figured out by studying a bunch of Night Sister stuff. And they're able to join their minds together as they get possessed by various Night Sister spirits. And so they're able to complete the vision and they learn that it's Obi-Wan Kenobi. They learn that he is on a planet with twin suns, but not necessarily what planet that is. And once the spell is broken, Maul says, oh yeah, well now we got to pay for having used the potion. And Ezra's like, what? And that payment means that some Night Sister spirits get to possess them. But Maul decides like, oh yeah, but I'm going to get out of here so they can just have you. So much for all this apprentice talk that Maul kept doing. Unless you consider <laughs> the fact that Darksiders are generally not very kind to their apprentices. So I guess that's kind of par for the course after all. Anyway, so Kanan and Sabine being rush in and they're the ones who get possessed by the spirits and Maul's like oh, I'm out of here and so Ezra has to fight Kanan and Sabine and get the spirits to leave them and this also happens to be the place where the Darksaber is and so this is how Sabine gets the Darksaber she's there it's on a little mantle almost like an altar with a picture of Satine the Duchess Satine Obi-Wan Kenobi's old flame over the saber and so yeah this is how Sabine ultimately gets the Darksaber so there's that bit of it too. 
So for Kenobi purposes, that's what you need to know about Visions and Voices. Then Twin Suns, that's the climactic episode of this whole situation. Maul is roaming around Tatooine, so he's figured out that it's Tatooine, and he can't find Kenobi, and he's yelling, Kenobi! Like in the desert, yeah, iconically, right? And so he gets an idea for how he might be able to draw Kenobi out. He still has a shard of that Sith holocron and manages to use it to do something that activates the Sith holocron that is in Ezra's possession over on Chopper Base on Adelon. And I'll spare you all the details, but basically they're trying to plan an attack on Lothal and... Hera says, yeah, Ezra, don't go. Like, we need you for this attack. And he's like, yeah, I understand. I get it. And then he sneaks off anyway. And as he's trying to sneak off, Chopper actually catches him in the act and stows away on the ship and <laughs> reveals himself as they arrive at Tatooine. I guess this is where the holocrons are leading Ezra. So that way they can be reunited, I guess, with the part of the Sith holocron that Maul still is in possession of. He brings both the Jedi and the Sith holocrons with him, Ezra does. But once Ezra and Chopper are there, Ezra figures out that yet again, <laughs> Maul has led him into a trap. There's a fight with some Tuscans and the ship gets blown up. And so Ezra and Chopper are stranded in the desert, are wandering. Chopper is powering down. Ezra is delirious and fainting. And Maul's whole thing is that Ezra's misery and pain are going to draw out Kenobi. So this is very similar to the idea that's expressed in the monologue that the Grand Inquisitor, Grand Inquisitor, excuse me, Grand Inquisitor? I was really going to say that. The Grand Inquisitor gives over the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer, right? When he talks about how the Jedi code is like an itch that they can't help scratch. Their compassion is their weakness. Maybe I'm paraphrasing and adding to this by now, but I think you know what I'm talking about here. Here. It's the same idea that Maul uses in order to draw Kenobi out to Ezra and figure out where he is so that way then he can pop over and face him once and for all. Which Kenobi does and Ezra wakes around a campfire and there's a little power unit charging Chopper and Ezra and Obi-Wan have a conversation. Ezra wants Obi-Wan to get back into the fight and says he can destroy the Sith and Obi-Wan's kind of surprised by this and says like you have already everything you need to be able to do that. And then of course Maul shows up and they have an argument and a scene and a fight and a death. And as Maul is dying in Obi-Wan's arms, he says, like, is he the chosen one? And the thing that he's talking about is whoever it is that Kenobi is guarding. Maul finally realizes that the only reason why Kenobi is tucked away in some backwater planet in the middle of nowhere is that, you know, there has to be a reason. Like, he would otherwise be out fighting. So he's like, you're protecting someone. And that's the moment where Obi-Wan says, eh, well, I didn't want to fight, but I guess it's going to be a fight because, yeah, he has to protect someone. And as Maul's dying and says, this is the chosen one, Kenobi says, yes, which it raises the question of whether Anakin was the chosen chosen one or whether Luke was the chosen one and all these prophecies and whatnot or maybe just what Obi-Wan's interpretation of it is or even just what he was telling Maul to comfort Maul in his dying moments. And I'll share two last things about this for your consideration. One of them has to do with the fact that as Obi-Wan sends Ezra away, Ezra's like, I led him to you, I'll help you fix this. And Obi-Wan says, I'll mend this old wound, which is some <laughs> pretty heavy language for sure. He sends Ezra actually off in a direction that leads apparently straight to Maul's ship. So that takes care of how Ezra and Chopper are able to get back off of the planet. So that's convenient. But that old wound line there's something about that that just feels like it's been quite a long time <laughs> since they've last seen each other and so yeah that's that's one thing another thing has to do with the fact that as Ezra is talking to the rest of his specter cell compatriots and considering the possibility that Obi-Wan Kenobi is still alive they don't believe him, and in fact, there's a discussion about the fact that Bail Organa himself told Rex that Obi-Wan Kenobi had died. So this is really fascinating because, of course, Bail knows that Obi-Wan is alive, right? They were meeting at the end of Revenge of the Sith and picking out babies <laughs> to take care of, right? 
So this is Bail Organa's deepest, most you know, valuable, most prized, most important secret of all. And Rex has been on the radar, although you know who knows what kind of contact he's had with Bail over the years. But it's something that Bale has not revealed to Rex over the course of more than a decade, and certainly he's had opportunity to do so. So yeah, it seems like the secret of Obi-Wan has remained safe for a very long time, and I just I get the feeling from everything that transpired in Rebels that this was the very first time that that secret was broken, that Kenobi's presence was known and discovered on Tatooine, that it was specifically him that was residing in secret on Tatooine. Because prior to that, there's only five people who knew that Obi-Wan was on Tatooine. It was Bail Organa, Yoda, Uncle Owen, Aunt Beru, and young Luke Skywalker. And young Luke really has nothing to say about the whole thing. So yeah, anyway. So there you go. That is the deal with Kenobi and Maul on Tatooine and the discovery of that secret and whether it's possible that there could have been any other interaction between the two of them in the years prior to his appearance on Star Wars Rebels. And that is gonna do it for this episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited for their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.